The bustling scene of Black Friday was always a sight to behold at the Springfield Supermart. The atmosphere crackled with anticipation and urgency as bargain hunters vied for the best deals. However, in 2010, the thrill of the shopping spree morphed into dread and apprehension when a spate of disappearances sent shockwaves through the entire community. The day unfolded like any other Black Friday. The eager crowd amassed at the entrance long before opening hours, eager to plunge into the frenzy of discounts. Among them was Sarah Johnson, a single mother determined to snag great deals for her three children's Christmas presents. Sarah dove into the store alongside the throng when the gates swung open, intending to rendezvous with her kids at the electronics aisle an hour later. But as the appointed time approached, her children were nowhere to be seen. Initially, Sarah brushed off her concerns, assuming her children had been drawn away by some enticing display. However, as the minutes ticked by without any sign of them, her unease escalated into panic. Despite her frantic efforts to locate them, they remained elusive. With a sinking heart, Sarah contacted the authorities, prompting an immediate shutdown of the store. As word spread, other families came forward with similar tales of missing loved ones. By nightfall, the tally stood at eight children, vanished without a trace. The authorities launched an urgent investigation, poring over the surveillance footage from the local Walmart. Despite their exhaustive efforts, they unearthed no clues regarding the perpetrators. A pall of fear settled over the city as residents grappled with uncertainty, fearing for the safety of their own children. Just when it seemed like the inquiry hit a brick wall, a keen-eyed investigator noticed a recurring figure in the recordings. A cloaked individual appeared each time a child vanished. This mysterious figure wasn't affiliated with the store, and no one could place him. The police circulated images of the man, appealing to the public for assistance in identifying him. The story made national headlines, and within days, an anonymous tipster reached out to the authorities, revealing the man's identity as Eddie Grubber, a former convict with a rap sheet of minor offenses. Acting swiftly, law enforcement descended upon the location provided by the informant, a dilapidated farm on the outskirts of town. Their arrival yielded a startling revelation. The abducted children were found safe and unharmed, concealed within a secret chamber in the farmhouse cellar. Eddie was promptly apprehended, and during questioning, he confessed to meticulously orchestrating the kidnappings over several months, capitalizing on the chaos of Black Friday to execute his scheme. Motivated by a sense of retribution, he harbored a belief that society had forsaken him. The news of the children's recovery and Eddie's capture brought a collective sigh of relief to the city's inhabitants. The reunited families embraced their children tightly, but the trauma lingered long after the ordeal. Sarah Johnson, in particular, struggled to overcome the haunting memories of those frantic hours searching for her children. The guilt weighed heavily on her shoulders, wondering if there was more she could have done to protect them. She sought solace in therapy sessions and the support of her community, slowly rebuilding her shattered sense of security. In the subsequent years, Black Friday underwent stringent surveillance measures. Yet the atmosphere at Walmart, once pulsating with consumer fervor, now exuded an eerie sense of foreboding. No longer a beacon of convenience, it stood as a grim testament to fear, a stark reminder of a harrowing chapter that people wished to erase from memory. Shoppers navigated the aisles with trepidation, wary of lurking dangers amid the discounted wares. As November's air crackled with anticipation for the approaching Black Friday, the residents of Springfield collectively held their breath. The city clung to fragile hope fervently praying that the specter of past horrors would remain confined to memory, never to be resurrected again. I used to work at a large retail store, not too dissimilar from Walmart, but I'll keep the name private for confidentiality reasons. This store operated 24 hours a day, catering to a diverse clientele. Due to my child's school schedule, I opted for overnight shifts, enabling me to manage dropping him off and picking him up. My typical shift ran from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. It was a challenging time for me, juggling work, parenting, and occasionally a second job, but it was necessary to make ends meet. The store, akin to a supercenter, offered a wide array of products, making it a popular destination 
even during the late hours. However, the onset of COVID eventually altered the operating hours. On one particularly cold night, as I arrived for my shift around 10 p.m., the store still buzzed with activity, albeit less than during the daytime hours. As the night progressed, the number of shoppers dwindled, and the atmosphere took on a peculiar quietness, often accompanied by the presence of unconventional characters. During the early morning hours, staffing levels reduced significantly. Only one attendant manned the self-checkout area, with the regular registers closed for the night. Alongside a few colleagues, I focused on restocking shelves, while the warehouse staff remained largely secluded in the back. The night manager oversaw operations, though our paths seldom crossed during my shift. On this particular night, while I was busy restocking the cereal aisle, I noticed a customer passing by. Moments later, he reappeared at the end of the aisle, pausing to scrutinize the cereal selection. His curly hair obscured any clear indication of his ethnicity, and a bulging black backpack hung from his shoulders. He lingered awkwardly, seemingly fixated on the granola bars before approaching me with a query about the bread aisle. I offered directions, and he mumbled a thanks before shuffling away with a distinct waddle in his gait. As I continued my task, I couldn't shake the feeling of his presence. Every few minutes he would pass by the aisle, his gaze directed towards me, though he carried nothing and made no purchases. His conspicuous backpack only added to my unease. Determined to distance myself, I hastened my work, eager to finish the aisle and move on. Once done, I returned the empty U-boat platform to the warehouse and retrieved another laden with boxes for restocking. Opting for an aisle far removed from the cereal section, I focused on the chip aisle, hoping to evade any further encounters. Nearly 45 minutes had elapsed since our initial interaction, and logically, he shouldn't have still been lingering. Yet, to my dismay, he managed to track me down once again. As I diligently arranged the newer bags of chips, ensuring they were positioned behind the older ones on the shelf, I glanced to my right and spotted the same individual lurking at the end of the aisle, his presence unnerving me once more. Despite his persistent presence for nearly an hour, he still hadn't made a purchase. With a sinking feeling, I braced myself for his inevitable approach. Sure enough, he sauntered over to me, and I averted my gaze, hoping to deter him. However, he proceeded to utter words that made my skin crawl. While I can't recall his exact phrasing, he essentially expressed admiration for my appearance and admitted to having been observing me. I mustered a polite response, masking my discomfort with a forced laugh and a gracious refusal. Yet, he persisted, delving into personal inquiries about my background, to which I provided fabricated responses. His repulsive odor and full breath only intensified my aversion, but he remained undeterred, pressing for my phone number under the guise of friendship. Faced with his persistence, I relented, providing a false number, and hastily excused myself, citing the need to focus on my duties. His parting words tainted with creepiness, lingered in the air as he departed, evidently pleased with himself for obtaining my number, unaware it was counterfeit. I hoped that would be the end of the ordeal, but time seemed to drag on endlessly as I yearned to conclude my shift and return home. Then, unexpectedly, my fellow stock worker radioed me, disrupting the tenuous calm of the night. Upon receiving the distressing message from my co-worker about a suspicious individual seeking me out, panic surged through me. Hastily, I instructed her to inform him that I had already left, before swiftly making my way to the employee lounge, seeking refuge from the unsettling encounter. As I settled into a seat, attempting to calm my racing thoughts, the tranquility was shattered by the abrupt entrance of the ominous figure. His demeanor was menacing, his eyes ablaze with fury as he accused me of deceit, hurling vile insults in my direction. Fear clenched my throat and I struggled to maintain composure as he advanced towards me, unceremoniously dumping his bulging backpack onto an adjacent table. With trembling hands, he unzipped the bag, his gaze fixed intently on me, sending shivers down my spine. Sensing imminent danger, I knew I had to flee. Without hesitation, I sprang to my feet and darted past him, narrowly evading his grasp. Racing through the store, adrenaline coursing through my veins, I glanced back to see him in hot pursuit. With no time to spare, I sprinted towards the store's entrance and dashed to my car, 
my only instinct for self-preservation overriding rational thought. As I sped away, relief flooded over me, yet unease lingered, knowing he had seen my vehicle. Upon reaching safety, I immediately contacted the night manager, recounting the harrowing ordeal and expressing my reluctance to return. Despite his insistence that I come back to ensure adequate staffing, I stood firm in my refusal, adamant about my safety. Eventually, he relented, promising to address the situation with the authorities and review the surveillance footage. Reluctantly, I returned the following night, though apprehension gnawed at me. It was a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurked within the seemingly mundane confines of my workplace. I shuddered at the thought of what the man with the ominous backpack might have been concealing, praying fervently that I would never have to find out. For years, the main retail store in Bellflower, a quaint town nestled in the heart of the country, had served as the focal point of the community, a place where locals gathered and found all they required. However, in 2021, a string of perplexing incidents shattered this sense of security. It all commenced one March evening when the store's manager received an ominous phone call, hinting at the presence of a bomb within the premises. Swiftly, the authorities were notified and the store swiftly evacuated. Despite exhaustive searches, no explosive device was discovered. The community was left reeling, pondering over the identity and motives of the perpetrator behind such a malevolent hoax. A month later, amidst an ordinary day, a patron suddenly alarmed everyone by claiming to have spotted an armed individual roaming the aisles. Once again, law enforcement was summoned, yet their search yielded no results. Anxiety gripped Bellflower as the fear of potential attacks loomed large. The unsettling incidents became recurrent, each time prompting police intervention, store evacuation, and thorough searches that yielded nothing. No bombs, no armed suspects, no perpetrators. Only frayed nerves among the patrons and disconcerted employees. The community felt ensnared by an unseen and sinister menace. Then, on a chilly November morning, a fire erupted in the warehouse section of the Walmart. While the flames were swiftly extinguished, the ensuing damage was substantial. Yet the cause of the fire remained elusive. Questions mounted. Who or what was behind this unnerving series of events? Was it a saboteur? A deranged troublemaker? Alternatively, there lingered a sinister undercurrent to these occurrences. By this stage, apprehension had firmly entrenched itself in the town. Patronage dwindled at the Walmart and even the employees grew increasingly hesitant to report for duty. Despite assurances from law enforcement and store management, an undeniable sense of trepidation persisted. Each person feared they could be the next, to stumble upon something horrifying or endure a harrowing ordeal. The once unshakable pillars of security and communal trust had been shattered. Efforts to uncover the truth intensified. The police conducted interrogations, scrutinized surveillance footage, yet yielded no substantial breakthroughs. The community existed in a perpetual state of vigilance, keeping watchful eyes and extending support to one another. Eventually, the decision was made to shutter the Walmart in Bellflower. Despite exhaustive investigations, the culprits behind the unsettling events remained elusive. No evidence, no suspects, only the lingering specter of fear that had infiltrated the fabric of daily life in the small town. It was as though the Walmart had become tainted, enveloped in a cloak of terror and uncertainty. Even with its closure, the Bellflower community continued to grapple with the aftermath of the inexplicable disruptions. Fear endured, accompanied by a slew of unanswered questions. Amidst the turmoil, whispers circulated among Bellflower's residents regarding a suspicious individual a person who had undergone multiple job interviews at Walmart without securing employment. Some swore they had frequently spotted this figure skulking around the store, clandestinely observing and meandering amidst the shelves. This testimony triggered a surge of apprehension within the community, fostering speculation about a potential link between the enigmatic individual and the unsettling occurrences at the Walmart in Bellflower. In response to the concerns raised by citizens, local authorities opted to interrogate the individual under suspicion. 
he was summoned for extensive questioning, delving into his visits to Walmart and his presence during the troubling incidents. Yet, despite lingering doubts, insufficient evidence precluded his arrest or the imposition of precautionary measures. The dearth of concrete proof hampered law enforcement's efforts to unravel the enigma surrounding the Bellflower Walmart. Despite community pressure and the unwavering resolve of authorities to ensure justice, the suspicious individual remained an elusive figure, a constant presence in collective conjecture but devoid of any proven culpability. Deep in the heart of Texas, nestled within the serene town of Plainview, looms the grandiose Walmart store, serving as the bustling epicenter of daily life for its inhabitants. Yet, concealed beneath the facade of normalcy, lies a grim tale that sent shockwaves through the entire city. This is the chilling chronicle of Travis Miller, an unassuming Walmart cashier who metamorphosed into a merciless harbinger of death. A familiar presence at the age of 28, Travis was warmly regarded by Plainview's denizens. His affable demeanor and gentle countenance endeared him to the patrons of Walmart, rendering him a beloved figure amongst them. Little did they know, hidden behind his pleasant visage, lay a sinister fixation. The unsettling saga commenced on a somber summer afternoon, as the community recoiled in horror when five regular Walmart customers vanished without a trace over the course of several months. Despite the frenzied efforts of law enforcement, the missing individuals remained elusive, shrouded in mystery. Fear and paranoia gripped the populace as they pondered the identity of the perpetrator behind these heinous deeds. Fate took a decisive turn one fateful evening, when a loyal Walmart patron stumbled upon a disconcerting scene in the store's parking lot. While loading groceries into his car's trunk, he caught sight of Travis Miller, frantically attempting to conceal something ominous within a sizable black bag. Disturbed by the sight, he wasted no time in alerting the authorities, providing them with a meticulous account of his observation. Promptly responding to the report, Plainview's law enforcement descended upon Travis Miller's residence, poised to unearth any possible connection to the enigmatic disappearances. Stepping into Travis's abode, they were met with an eerie ambiance, the walls adorned with macabre paintings that cast a chilling pall over the surroundings. In the depths of the house's cellar, the officers stumbled upon a chilling revelation. The lifeless forms of the missing individuals lay meticulously preserved, shrouded in black wrappings. The ghastly tableau sent a shiver down the spines of the law enforcement personnel, confirming the darkest apprehensions of the community. Travis Miller was swiftly apprehended and transported to the police precinct for interrogation. Before the investigators, his affable facade crumbled, exposing the cold, merciless truth of his nature. With unsettling composure, he admitted to orchestrating the disappearances and subsequent murders. Travis callously detailed how he leveraged his role as a Walmart cashier to surveil his victims discreetly. He singled out regular patrons, often solitary or vulnerable, whom he meticulously tracked after his shifts, patiently awaiting the opportune moment to extinguish their lives. News of Travis's arrest spread like wildfire throughout the community, igniting a maelstrom of shock and dread. The once charming countenance of the youthful cashier was now synonymous with sheer malevolence. Dubbed the cashier of death by local and national media, Plainview found itself thrust into the unforgiving glare of public scrutiny, with the entire nation gripped by the unfolding horror. The presence of Walmart in Plainview underwent a profound transformation. Visitors entered the premises with a palpable sense of unease, their senses heightened and suspicions aroused. What was once a beacon of convenience and mundane routine now stood as a stark reminder of the lurking shadows that could engulf even the most familiar of locales. In efforts to reassure the community and prevent any recurrence of such tragedies, local authorities took decisive action. Stringent security measures were enacted across the city, with heightened surveillance becoming a prominent feature. Installation of surveillance cameras, both within Walmart and its environs, aimed to monitor any suspicious activities diligently. Police patrols were intensified, particularly during the night, ensuring a constant and reassuring presence. However, despite these concerted efforts, 
A palpable sense of fear and unease lingered within the Plainview community. The harrowing tale of the Cashier of Death continued to cast a grim shadow over the city's daily affairs. Each visit to Walmart was accompanied by an undercurrent of anxiety and heightened vigilance, serving as a stark reminder of life's fragility and the omnipresence of malevolence even in the most mundane settings. In the heart of Central America lies the tranquil town of Hollis, renowned for its rustic charm and serene ambiance. Anchored within its midst stands a Walmart store, serving as a focal point for both locals and occasional visitors alike. However, beneath the warm glow of its neon lights and inviting aura lies a sinister narrative, a chilling incident that has tarnished the store's once sterling reputation. Susan Redford, a beloved figure in her community, epitomized hard work and devotion. A widowed mother of two, she found solace in her role as a night janitor at Walmart. Despite the unconventional hours, she relished the tranquility and solitude that the nighttime afforded her, away from the hustle and bustle of daytime activities. Yet, on a bitter January night in 1998, as she meticulously tended to the deserted grocery aisles, she was startled by a distant noise. A muffled noise, seemingly emanating from the toy department, grabbed Susan's attention. Assuming it was just a fallen product, she made her way towards the source. However, as she drew closer, the noise transformed into the heart-wrenching cry of a baby, echoing hauntingly through the deserted aisles. Though her heart raced, Susan's maternal instinct propelled her forward. Upon reaching the department, the flickering neon lights added an eerie dimension to the already spectral atmosphere. Despite her thorough search, she found no trace of the crying infant. Suddenly, a whisper, a child's voice pleading, Mommy, help me, sent a shiver down her spine. Whirling around, she found herself alone once more. Terrified, she fled from the toy department, abandoning her bucket and mop in her haste. The next morning, she recounted the chilling encounter to her colleagues, igniting a wildfire of fear and suspense among them. In the ensuing days, inexplicable occurrences became commonplace. Toys seemed to move of their own accord, lights flickered erratically, and the sound of a baby's cry echoed sporadically through the empty aisles. Disturbed by these events, some employees resigned, unable to endure the atmosphere of dread. Determined to uncover the truth, one employee delved into the property's history, unearthing a tragic tale. Prior to the construction of the Walmart, an ancient farmhouse had occupied the site where, in the 1960s, a family perished in a devastating fire. The sole survivor, a boy named Timothy, was subsequently adopted by distant relatives. This revelation bolstered the belief that Timothy's spirit lingered, tethered to the location, haunting the aisles in search of his lost mother. Despite management's reassurances and the intervention of exorcists and mediums, reports of sightings and eerie noises persisted. Customers and staff alike shared unsettling experiences, particularly on chilly winter nights. Thus, the Hollis Walmart became steeped in legend and mystery, evoking both fear and fascination. While the shelves remained stocked and customers continued to frequent the store, the tale of the ghostly child's quest for his mother endured transforming Walmart into more than just a retail outlet. In the quaint town of Woodbridge, New Jersey, there was a figure known to all as Old Joe. His given name was Joseph Manders, but to the locals, he was simply Old Joe, the beggar who had claimed his spot outside the local Walmart for years. Old Joe, with his silver mane of long hair, weathered face, and piercing gaze seemed a permanent fixture, regardless of the elements or the hour. He would politely ask Walmart patrons for spare change, though never persistently. If his request was ignored, he remained seemingly unperturbed, or so it appeared. However, in the winter of 2022, an unsettling series of events began to unfold. Woodbridge residents began to vanish without a trace. The first to disappear was Margaret Stevens, a middle-aged woman who never returned home after a trip to Walmart. Then came Derek Young, a young student, and Helen Murphy, an elderly lady, both vanishing after visiting the same Walmart. Despite a thorough investigation by the police, no clues or connections among the victims could be found. Fear took hold of the town, 
and Walmart became a place many avoided. Meanwhile, Old Joe continued his routine of begging, seemingly unfazed by the unfolding turmoil. However, a breakthrough came on a chilly February afternoon. Officer Ricardo Hernandez, on patrol duty, noticed Margaret Stevens passing by Old Joe without offering him any spare change. He recalled the incident vividly as he was struck by the beggar's intense and angry gaze. Drawing from this observation, the police shifted their focus onto Old Joe. Suspicions mounted as relatives and acquaintances of the missing individuals recounted negative encounters with him during their investigations. Whispers spread throughout Woodbridge, New Jersey, painting a chilling portrait of Old Joe's interactions with those who denied him charity. While some recounted heated arguments, others spoke of disdainful glances or cutting remarks. It appeared that Joe harbored a particular resentment towards those who refused him alms. Yet, tangible evidence remained elusive, and Joe continued his stoic vigil outside Walmart, biding his time. Determined to uncover the truth, the police intensified surveillance on him, hoping to catch him in the act. However, Joe's behavior showed no signs of malice or wrongdoing. Then, one fateful night, Joe vanished. His customary spot outside Walmart lay empty, prompting the police to raid his dilapidated shack on the town's outskirts. Yet, their search yielded a chilling discovery. Photographs of the missing individuals, newspaper clippings chronicling their disappearances, and, most disturbingly, personal belongings belonging to the victims. These findings suggested a sinister connection between Joe and the vanished individuals. Despite exhaustive efforts, old Joe remained elusive, and his victims were never recovered. The Walmart building in Woodbridge transformed into a somber memorial, serving as a stark reminder of the tragedy that had unfolded. Though Old Joe was gone, his spectral presence lingered, casting an eerie pall over the vicinity. Every passerby felt the weight of his unseen gaze, sending a shiver down their spine, a haunting reminder that malevolence can lurk in the most mundane of places and people. The Woodbridge community grappled with the aftermath of the disappearances, living in perpetual unease, fearful of who might vanish next. Discussions in local cafes and neighborhood gatherings were dominated by conjecture and speculation regarding the victims' fates and Old Joe's potential involvement. Some even entertained the notion that Joe possessed a sinister power or cursa, enabling him to make individuals vanish without a trace. Speculation ran rife in Woodbridge, with some conjecturing that Old Joe might be linked to a clandestine criminal syndicate or embroiled in a bizarre scientific experiment. Meanwhile, Walmart in Woodbridge bore witness to a stark downturn in patronage. Fearful of attracting the attention of the presumed perpetrator, people steered clear of the store, causing the once bustling parking lot to gradually empty and the number of open cash registers to dwindle. Despite Walmart management's efforts to reassure the community, fear had firmly taken root. The police pursuit persisted for months, yet each lead led to a dead end. Despite exhaustive efforts such as phone taps, DNA analysis, and interrogations, the case remained frustratingly unsolved. Many residents of Woodbridge resigned themselves to the notion that the truth would forever elude them. Gradually, albeit cautiously, people began to return to Walmart. Volunteer groups emerged to organize nighttime patrols, bolstering the community's sense of security. Together, they sought to surmount the trauma and restore a semblance of normalcy. However, as time marched on, the mystery surrounding the disappearances and Old Joe's fate persisted, shrouded in darkness. Speculation abounded as to whether Old Joe still roamed the streets or if he had met his own demise. Some feared his potential return, even more menacing and determined than before, while others held out hope that he had been apprehended or had left town for good. Yet regardless of the truth, the association between Walmart and Woodbridge would forever be steeped in the memory of that ominous era, a haunting reminder of the missing souls and the enigmatic puzzles left unsolved. Subscribe if you're interested in more creepy videos.